It's yep. between the Mouse from Disassemble's Pam Windrunner to the Kerry Lesh now. They're definitely, you know, using history here in their draft, you could say, away. And they're also making history here, trying to play an entire best of three series without picking an, a single traditional carry hero. <laughs> they're just uh, a little bit of an unorthodox team and definitely a unique team to play against. No, for sure, and a fun one to watch. I mean, is it going into this one as well? Uh, sort of the reasons for why Kerry Lesh was a, a strong hero in the past, did they sort of stand here in this game? I mean, what, what do you think they've seen about this that has made them feel that it's going to be nice to have the Lesh in that position one? I think they just wanted something that's high tempo, but not something that's going to be weak early because they play, uh, they play this game in, in such a, let's say, aggressive manner. And Leshrak has a ton of damage. Literally every single ability he has is damage ability. So if he just has a good start, gets a few items, then he can turn up the pace so much. Um, similar to what they did with Doom. I mean, Doom also, they enabled him really well in last game. Also, I want to give a little bit of a shout out here to the fact that they didn't pick Fishman's Grandmaster Bane, but instead they have a Master Tier Bane on Kataomi. It's not like this guy doesn't play Bane. No, no dude, he, we just saw on the load up, I think he had about 400 wins on Bane, 200 losses. Yeah, like, yeah. This, this guy's got at least 600 games on Bane. It's That's funny. a lot. Yeah, it's funny when you have two players who are so exceptional <laughs> on the same hero. Who said you could stroll so, in yeah, obviously, if Fishman is not going to play it, he's like, yeah, I can, I can take it for a game. <laughs> Happily. I like what they did here, by the way. Let's talk a little bit about top lane. The Quelling Blade Bane cutting all these trees here, making it harder for Puppy to play the lane. This is a little bit of an investment in gold, of course, getting the Quelling Blade as you're not last hitting. Uh, but it's also going to allow you to cut people out of the Hoodwink's uh, snare. You can stop the stun early as he gets caught himself. But he's just running up, even with no HP he wants to trade. Yeah, he knows he's got the Nightmare in a second, so... Yeah, shouldn't has to, be under threat. Yeah, has to be a little bit careful not to lose all his HP. He's gonna back up himself. Top lane, no. Look, looks pretty solid for Entity. The start they should have here. And it's, it's gonna be interesting to well see how well they they do do with Chrysalis is on, on, back on the razor. Of course, this was something they were doing time and time again. They love having him on it. I mean, understandable in the past. This was sort of his hero when he's been on previous teams. He would crush games with. But I'll be honest, when you look at this game, I feel like Entity they've got a lot of heroes that. In the you know later on in the game, they're not going to be caring about getting linked at all, right? You know, it's, it's probably one of the least worries for a carry lesh. Who cares if you take the right click? Yeah, nobody cares about preserving their right click. It's more about whether or not Racer starts hitting really hard. Okay. But it's not about you losing your damage. Sure. They don't care about that. He's going to have targets that are going to be in his face, so he's right. going to get the full links off. And, and you could say that yep. in a way, Leshrak is happy to take that static link because he's going to run next to you with Edict and with Pulse Nova as well. So yeah. you, you're going to have to trade your life for getting that steal bit of harassment from the Bane, just laying in the auto attacks. Um, we also have a swap on mid lane, of course. This time we see Stormstormer playing on the Puck, and we have Nisha playing on the Ember Spirit. So this matchup, Nisha did play really well when he was the Puck. He did. He has sort of like a wave and a bit of, of, of CS ahead of of uh, Storm Stormer's Ember. Yeah. He, like after the laning stage. Yeah, I think Nisha is very, very mechanically skilled in lane. Honestly, Stormstormer is a fantastic player, but I think his strength shines in his communication and the ability to see where to go and when. I, I think that's like his standout uh, quality. Of course, his laning is still really good. Nice light dodge. On top lane. Should be the first blood here. First blood for Toby as they take down Puppy. Yeah. If Chrysalis can get Toby in return, it's a good link. Two One hit. more hit. And indeed, they, they might not have got the first blood, but secret, they will get the kill for the carry. Yeah, they're going to be happy with that still on Chrysalis. Chris is going to go back to farming. And uh, TP back to top lane by Puppy. And we have Tangos. Pass the Tangos. Those, ta those Tangos, por favor, right? And it's now days without, those, without the salve. You're not getting any of those anymore. Surprise. Bottom lane, the Timbersaw Enigma lane. Rather difficult lane to uh, straight up contest here for Entity, but they're trying to keep them away from pulling Still, though, the Dire Creeps are going to be pulled. I, I don't think this is an easy lane for Leshrac. Even though Timber is not the scariest. You see him fighting off a little bit here. I'll farm the cogs. I like it. And overall as well in this, this game, how, how good of a game has it ended up being for Ice Ice Ice? Like, are there many heroes that, that will have good threat of killing a Timber later? There's 
I mean, you always have to look out a little bit for getting hookshotted into Fiend Script or something. There, there's a lot of combos that can kill you. Uh, but at the same time, I think his damage could be pretty good in this game. Being able to cut down the clockwork quite fast, having the ability to burst the Brewmaster a little bit more. I think it's not the worst Timber game, but it's not free. That's a good link top. Yeah, big link. And doing some right clicks afterwards as well, getting value. Stoning people out. And meanwhile, mid, we see rather even now, slight advantage for uh, Nisha, but there are still three creeps to kill for Puck as well, so yeah, this, this is almost dead even. Yeah, the only lane where we're seeing a bit of a difference really been that top lane, and Toby a little bit further behind, but of course he did get the first blood to ops offset that sort of lack of CS. So yeah, really close laning stage here, first five minutes. Yeah, this is where we could see Ember start taking a lead, though, because he has level 3 Slider Fist, and he has the Blightstone. Look at the Puck's HP. It just so disappears. Much damage, yeah. yeah, this is where I honestly don't know how Nisha played this matchup so well as uh, Puck. I almost want to go back and just watch that replay purely for the mid. Sure. Because uh, at this point, 3 and Slight, as a Puck, you're just taking too much damage to stick around. Yeah, it becomes difficult uh, around this point. And we see, for that reason, he's running back to base with Stormstormer, so... So I think there's there, there's a bit to learn there, perhaps, uh, from the last game. Bottom lane is still very statically about this big camp, as uh, Dyer seems to always have the lane a little bit in their favor. That's the effect of Enigma, just denying, of course. And uh, Timber being slightly too difficult to harass for, for Leshrac here. See is wise. They're both happy, though. Both are getting decent farm. Uh, and what are we going to sort of see from the, the carry less in terms of a build? Are, are you sort of building for the setup with the yules, or do you have to sort of rush the, these sort of items that are going to keep you alive and tank you up? Uh, it's going to be curious to see from the carry. I think yeah. he's going to get some, some mana first. So, yeah, he's already sending out the energy booster to get himself some mana in the lane. Uh, but from there on, yeah, I think yules up there is worth it. Travels is also definitely worth considering. Um... I would like to see him go high mobility and high mana region, basically, so he can play the entire map and soak up a lot of the farm, and then go from there with bigger itemizations. Also, an item to consider is the Shroud. Shroud is insanely good on Leshrac nowadays. It was one of the big things reading the last patch, was the Shroud and Bloodstone were buffed. Those are Leshrac items. Lesh is the only hero you might actually see a vibe Bloodstone. I was gonna say, yeah, Bloodstone. I haven't seen that item in years. No, no. It, honestly, I miss the old Bloodstone, if I'm gonna tell you. I well, the one the where you just build up charge the charges. Yeah. yeah. It made it exciting to kill a hero and, you know, collect their soul in your stone. There's something about it. See. Top lane. Chase down onto Toby. I mean, continues to just have a bit of a tough time in this lane, but yeah, as expected. And Chrysalis crushing it up here. 40 for 13. Very hard for Toby as a brew to, to really do much to slow down a, a Razor in this matchup. Yeah, very difficult. Mid lane, <laughs> Nisha gets stuck behind the uh, creeps. He has a Dita rune, so he's chasing and dealing a lot of damage here on the Puck. But you see, Puck cannot even really go up on lane and all the creeps being denied right now. Coil? Oh, doesn't really have a kill though. You would need help to bring him down there. Got the homie is nearby, but not close enough. Yeah, so far, only one for one in this game. Quite the calm start as a, as an ocean heart drops. An item that we heard in the interviews. People are really happy about. It's a fish man. Just gonna mess around around the power rune spawn. It's gonna end up being top. <laughs> yeah, and it's controlled by Katomi and Storm is gonna go over there and get it. Still though, that's a kill for Nisha. And look at the stack he's farming now. This is gonna be neutral items. All the neutral items. Let's go. Oh, you want to be careful about killing it in Slider Fist, actually. You can't drop neutral items while you're in Slider Fist. Wait, well, oh, because it doesn't consider you near? Yeah, you're not actually close. So oh, damn, this, this, I uh, didn't know that. There this, you go. Yeah, specific mechanic knowledge that's yeah? somewhat useless, but honestly not useless. <laughs> They're chasing down. Okay, not gonna kill. Same thing is true for um, for Ricky. If you trick a trade, you also yeah. do not exist technically. No, so. it makes sense, but it does it. But it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, indeed, because you're not there, but you are. So I so guess the you, you like, can solve oh, it. Not here. We can't drop it because it's not within range. Or exactly. Yeah. So you, you gotta slide early or have yeah. another hero nearby you when you slide. Yeah. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. 
top lane. Uh, we'll make a move as soon as the dream is back up. Uh, rotation towards the top will allow them to take down Puppy. Yeah, and uh, Ice as Ice. Still pretty happy here on his timber. He's getting people coming in. Enigma with Malifus. Should be able to get him in. Yeah, there's no way out of that one. Jack Ram is going to finish him off. With the full hood, I mean, at this point, you just ignore the timber, I think. It's too much resources to try and kill him. You don't really have the tools to kill him at all. Uh, so timber is just going to be fully ignored and you move somewhere else. But as they go try and pressure top, I think the timber might just stalk them and they leave Razor bottom instead. Of course, they're going to take this tower first get rid of it, but it is going to be secret again with the tower advantage in the early game. Radiant's with the first tower, tower taken. I think they took the first tower every single game. Rune control. Spawns top. A little bit of luck for Storm. Gets the haste rune. And how, how are sort of things for timings for, for a carry Lesh? Like, is it, does this sort of hero transition nicely into the late game or are you looking to roll over? I think you around like minute 35 and onwards you're gonna start struggling against the Razor sure. honestly because yeah. Razor at some point the ulti becomes very strong um, and Razor becomes difficult to control when he gets that movement speed talent as well the 21% move speed uh, catching the hoodwink. Wise choice to snap immediately though I think he gets away. Okay, good, good run. But yeah, Lushrak definitely a little bit of an earlier timing uh, for his power spike. He could be very strong later on in the game. If he was against something like Terrorblade, then his Aghanim sure, would be great. Sure, illusion heroes. Uh, but in this game, Aghanim on Lesh doesn't look very good. You're against Ember and Razor. I don't know. It doesn't seem like you can shine with that. For now, though, he's going for uh, Casual Cloak into Kaya. It's his item build. Which I can agree with. Kaya is super valued. No, oh, I guess it sort of speeds up the farming in terms of being able to spam the spells a bit more freely. Concerned about the cost. Oh, Ooh, all right, just dropping the black hole for that one there. Poor old fish man didn't stand a chance. Uh, I can get behind that as well. That Just use black hole. If it's the first black hole of the game, just use it for any single kill. Even if it's just a lowly support, kill him. Do it. You're not going to gain much by holding on to it if you don't have Blink Dagger, if you don't have, you know, a reason to hold the Black Hole. Just just use it. And now, with that, they can push bottom a little bit. Trying for some Aidolons. Only going to get the one. Rune spawn again. Gonna spawn top again, so Nisha, twice in a row. Probably feeling a little bit bad right now. Yeah, he's never getting the... Yeah. No luck. Illusion. Never lucky. Uh, I think Storm should be happy that he's getting these runes because he was struggling a little bit. Now, though, he is looking at 100 CS pretty much and uh, staying even with Ember. See if they can get some here in the jungle. They know that Secret's still hanging around. Zayat he will be the focus. Storm Storm is it. He can get the kill on his own. I look like he did so much damage, but it's just Enigma without any stat items is kind of squishy at level 6. Only 860 max HP. Kind of dies to a single puck like that. For now, rather slow start to this game. Only 3 and 4, but we see teams kind of building. The Witchblade, of course, for the puck. Standard item. Over on the Racer, he went with a Falcon Blade for farming. And then trying to go into the BKB. Already has the Lincoln queued up as well, so he's respecting the Bane. Worried about that Fiend's grip. Yeah, I mean, when, when you look at what they've got with the BKB and Lincolns, he should be free to sort of just run through the fights, get a max static link off. Yeah, and survive through the duration. They're trying to hit the timing of having both the Ember and Razor BKB at the same time. The Ember is going for a first item BKB, so no Maelstrom, no nothing, uh, is what he's looking at right now. Of course, might still change his mind, but unlikely. Against that lineup, against Puck, Leshrac, you just need to have a BKB. Um, no way around it. Even if it's nerfed, the item is necessary sometimes. Absolutely, especially when you, you feel that Entity as a lineup are probably going to be coming running at you sooner than later. So, so having that ability to just survive through any of the early attempts means that you know, you're going to be more likely to get through to the later portion of a game in a better condition. Should be said that that's, you know, a minor... Oh, nice hook onto Enigma. 
Well, they'll have him for sure here. Yep, just gonna go down. They're trying to come in to get some pick yeah, so... I wanna see if they can get something in return. They'll get the setup onto Fishman. They'll take him out. Toby looking like he wants to fight, but I'm not sure they can. Pure sticking around. He has got the one charges in a split. The bushwhack will catch him, and oh, it'll get the ult off. Grip. They're able to put the split. Great grip here to hold down Crystalis. As Secret, I think they pushed it a little too much there trying for kills. They'll have the setup on towards Ice Ice Ice. They look like they're going to be able to maybe take him down as well. They'll pop the stick charges. He's been silenced. He's got nowhere to run. Entity, oh, they'll take another. They'll jump for Puppy as well. Nisha is trying to find something in return. Will get pure, but he's caught by the silence. They might just clean him up as well. Nisha, he needs to get out of this one and put the oh. slide for a remnant. The Illusor Orb missed because he just slided the remnant. Wow, that was a nice dodge by Nisha. I mean, they still might still catch him. Yeah, that's the Witchblade hit. Oh, the hook shot! It's there after the slide. of fish, the pushback on the cogs into the right click. Entity will take him down. Yeah, this puck doing so much damage throughout the fight. That was really ballsy to take that fight. That was a last second primal split they got out as well in Brewmaster to set it all yeah, up. Yeah, Secret just went in on that. Yeah. They, they felt strong. And honestly, I think they'll be a bit surprised with how much Entity did get against them there. Entity, you know, Stormstorm in particular, cleaning up quite a bit. Great positioning as well by Kataomi coming in. After a lot of abilities were already used, he shows up with the Fiend script there. You see how they try to burst the Brewmaster head start. And it looks like they're gonna get him too. At the Searing Chains, everyone's just now, eyeballing him like, yeah, chain stun him. The question is, would he have got the ult oh, oh, if the tree wasn't cut by oh, Ice Ice Ice? Oh, Ice 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 griefed it. Do, would he, would, was he gonna die without that tree being I cut? I think he during would. The stun? I think he would, yeah. I think it would, if he managed to nuke, if he had like Chakram coming up and nuke above I mean, it, it's so hard for Ice 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 to do any damage there though, right, without hitting the tree. Yeah, like, yeah, gotta, yeah. You know, uh, I think... It, could I they think have he may have briefed that, though. Yeah, that's the anti-synergy of having Hoodwink and Timberstar, yeah, same team. It is. One of them loves the trees and lives in them, you know, relies on the nuts for, for sustenance. Meanwhile, the other one wants to see the world burn. So, uh, yeah. Poor little Hoodwink. You think Puppy is mad after that one? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, you know, he's a forgiving man. He'll give you one chance. Okay. And then okay. Second, he's not giving you a second if one. That happens if that again. happens again, yeah. he'll give you one. He'll let you off once. Yeah. It'll be one pizza party if you timber chain again. And what we got here? Smoke up from Secret. They do have the, the Blink Dagger uh, done on his way up for Zayas. But Zayas, he's not a part of this. He's elsewhere. Yeah, for now, though, Leshrac is not here in this fight, so I no, think no. Entity, they don't want to be there. They don't want to fight this. They also don't really have HP anymore. It's a little bit of a pause. The mouse. The mouse. The mouse, yeah. The cat. Oh, we get a lot of mouse issues. Yeah. Come on, boys and girls, sort your mouses out. Ah, that was quick. Just change your battery. It probably is, isn't it? Do you use wireless? Honestly, I do actually. It's very you do? nice. I do like them. But uh, I didn't have a battery. Oh. It's just you, you plug it in the cable. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not having to fiddle around with some AAs or any of that rubbish. All right, all right. Where's your wireless mouse from? The 80s? No, I use no. mouse with uh, with rechargeable battery, actually. Oh, myself. you do? You yeah. have to change the actual battery? Yeah. It I doesn't do. plug in and no. charge? No, I don't use Oh, you're like... living in the past. Yeah, a little bit. But it's a really good mouse, though, so I don't want to spoil. <laughs> <That's> your... <laughs> True, true, fair enough, friend. Yeah. I mean, once you find your mouse, you know, you're good, aren't you? You don't want to swap it. Yeah, it's rough, man. It's rough. It's really something you get used to. Yep. But I have to say, I don't think I see myself going back to wired after getting used to wireless. Nowadays, wireless is so That's good. true. That's true. Uh, back to the game. Anyway, what we got? <laughs> after, I mean, they started it talking about their mice. True, true. Their fault. Uh, we have a bit of a move towards top by Stormstormer. TP's up there and starts shoving. He doesn't have TP now, so he wants to play in this area. And uh, we might see might see a move with this ether lens on Bane, by the way. Yeah, this me could oh. catch him by surprise. You know, little things like the ether lens on someone like a Bane. You know, next thing you know, you get getting Fiend's group from across the trees. And you're like, whoa, you just get catched instantly. Yeah. Okay, full split committed immediately and tries to kill. Tries to kill the Hoodwink. Not the easiest. I can't quite do it on his own. Yeah, just going to have to run away. Take it easy. Clockwork, thinking if he can get a pick off. But in the end, it's just the two of them down here. So Brewmaster will be forced. That's going to feel good for Secret. However, he's pretty close to his uh, Aghanims. He's only 600 gold away. Uh, meanwhile, speaking of Aghanims, Kataomi has already queued up an Aghanims. I love that. If we get to see an Aghanims on him, that is a very strong item on his All game. right. Yeah. I mean, if you're rich enough. He's got the Philosophers. It's 45 
second cooldown reduction. That is so much CDR. Your ulti is up all the time. It's 55 second cooldown when you have it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you can just, you know, spam your ulti. The moment the fight starts, click it on someone. It's not that easy to stop it. Yeah. And it's a, it's a great game for, for the grip, right? You've got all yeah. these heroes. A lot of them are mobile heroes. Yeah, panel panel pointed it out that this is a, a very clean Bane game. This was the last big Bane, I believe, right? It was. So, yeah. It was indeed. Nice hook shot here to safety from Fishman. Yeah, of course. Secret are trying to... Trying to, uh, you know, mark that they are the strongest right now. They have the Black Hole ready, they have double BKB, they have Blink Enigma. Everything is kind of online for them. Meanwhile, on the side of uh, Entity, they do have BKB on, on Lashrak, but they're not quite as strong in fighting shape now. 5v5 would be difficult. They're waiting for that uh, Aghanims on Brewmaster, and he, of course, got forced to use ulti, so you just kind of concede bottom tower pressure. Not the highest amount of tower damage, though, inside of uh, Secret this time. They ate launch. They will help. And of course, Timber can tank it near indefinitely here. And that's finally the Aghanims complete for uh, Brew. Sends it out immediately. And as we've seen, it's... Not too, not too difficult for Toby to get the Primal Split off this game, right? They haven't got a huge amount that can stop him. Yeah, and it's going to be more and more difficult yeah. like as the game progresses. But yeah, already quite hard. The Shard is up on the Hoodwink, making use of it to scout. But this means that they currently have both the outposts on Team Secret. As they took the Tier 2 tower, they now have a big map control advantage having this bottom outpost uh, claimed already and not being able to lose the top one. So they're passively going to gain a little bit more experience. It's not a huge deal, but more of the map control that you have now. Yeah, I, f I feel like we're going to see Entity try and get aggressive now. They've got the BKB, the Kaya Stange done. Surely. Top playing those Storm Stormer. That's been found, but he is out. Yeah, manages to avoid the ulti of Hoodwink as well. Gets back to safety. And he's spearing up an E-Blade. I like the idea of getting E-Blade here in his team. If you have Leshrac on your team, I mean, just amp up that magic oh, damage. Some chain on chain action there. Hook shot in, Timber chain out. Yeah, the shard just standing there looking juicy. Nuke me. No takers. No, what's next on the item list for Pure? He's not got anything cute. Oh, actually he's in the mid, Kataomi. He's got the grip. Nisha, BKB will be there in time, so he'll manage to get out. They didn't quite have enough lockdown, nothing to follow up that Fiend's grip. We'll see back on the other half of the map. Uh, movement over towards Fishman. Chrysalis is ready to try and chase down Pure as well with the BKB. Pure has to pop his own. Keep himself safe. Now Chrysalis could be in trouble. They can lift him. This BKB comes to an end. Toby will be in with the stun. Pure still not quite safe enough to head straight towards him. He'll turn for the easier kill, go for Puppy instead. They catch him in the stun after the nightmare setup. Storm Snowman, he's coming from the side. Puppy's gonna buy back. They wanna try and save Crystalis. It's Crystalis getting low now, and with the BKB already used, he's running out of options. A slow off with the plasma field, but another stone gets thrown in by Toby. A few more hits should do it. He's got the kill. Ember coming in now, finally. Double damage here with the slider fist. Oh, to take down the kill. Let's see if they can get the brute. He's been caught by the hex. The old hit comes in from Puppy. And Secret, they will manage to take some kills off the, the, the back of that fight. Did have to use the buyback from Puppy. And uh, you know, for all pure, he was able to play it safe. He, he pretty much checked out of the fight quite early. He did. Uh, they also didn't have Nisha fighting there from the start of the fight. He was just kind of pushing mid. And Secret didn't need to use Black Hole. So, yeah, you used your BKBs, you used the buyback. But I still think Secret are happy with this. Um, since they still have the Black Hole available now yep. and can make a play. And uh, who cares about a support using buyback, right? It's, it's just a support. See so yeah, a pure indeed. We'll go for the Aghanims next. And at that point, he, he, you know, he'll hit sort of a peak where they'll, they'll really want to go. With the Ags, Kai, Sanj, BKB, that's almost certainly going to be go time from Entity. Yeah, the Aghanims will protect him against the Razor yeah, trying to do damage to him. So even if he gets linked by Razor, He's going to, of course, ghost form himself. And if Bracer doesn't have Beak be ready, he can ghost form him too. Do extra damage to him. But yeah, this smoke, the Enigma used, not really going to find anyone. They were just trying to 
wait and see. <laughs> the cheese taunt. That's a good call from Ice as well. And he wants to get the, the Hex out as soon as he can. Katomi went back for a casual uh, Shadow Amulet, which I think might stay casual, by the way. It's really big value to have that. Being able to go faded all the time. Fading while you're casting ulti is really nice for any targeted abilities. And uh, I think just keeping it like that and not even making it glimmer can be really big value. I can't remember who it was I was talking to about that. I think Teagov maybe was talking about how OP it actually is. Like, if you just spam it on yourself, there's no cooldown. So just do it all the time, and no matter if the enemy goes on you, you will fade. This is what open eye would abuse if would it, it was shadow yeah. amulet on all five. Heroes. I mean, it would have if it, <laughs> you know, if uh, if it bought invis and stuff. Because there's no reason not to spam it on yourself. Secret. They're gonna let you try and jump, but already Stormstorm used the coil to hold back Nietzsche. Puts the BKB, but Katom is ready and waiting with the Fiend script. As soon as the BKB has been used, locking him down. Again, another slide fist off, jumping with the remnant to try and burst through them, but it's not enough damage to get the kills. Nisha, he has to back off. Toby will finish your puppy. See, Chrysalis committing now with the BKB and statically. Covid Awards, Pure and Pure is absolutely dying to this physical damage from Chrysalis. Chrysalis takes Pure out with no struggle whatsoever. Entity, they have to back out of the fight. Nisha, he'll still stick oh. around. The Rocket Flare catches him. Fishman makes making sure that Nisha gets taken down before Stormstormer falls. Yeah, I think he calculated that he would live against the Puck there, but then the rocket comes in as well, throwing him off, and he dies. In the end, not too terrible for Entity, even two though two. they did lose, of course, the Brewmaster and the Leshrac, and nearly the Puck. If they use Grip like that on a BKB and they don't get the kill, it's really rough, especially as Racer, when there's no Grip, will just run in and chase whoever he wants. So I, think I mean, that, that's the thing is, we're seeing it there in that last fight. At this stage of the game, it really does feel like if, if Chrysalis pops his BKB, presses all his buttons, and, and Pure pop, pops his BKB, presses all his buttons, Chrysalis will kill this Leshra. Yes, he will. Um, so that's why I think right now it's the job of either Clockwork or Bane yeah. to control this. I mean, they've got, yeah, they've got to hold back the Razor during these BKBs. They have tools. They can hookshot him. They can still put down the cogs, so he has to walk around them or stay and hit them. Uh, and you can Fiend script him. These are all tools you can use during the BKB, and potentially you could nightmare him before he gets the BKB off. So there are ways to stop him. As we see here, the high damage build on uh, on Nisha. Oh, smoke time. I, you know, they're, they've realized the secret with these fights, Chrysalis, as long as his BKB is good to go, he can just run in. And you know, at this stage, Pure hasn't got any answers for him. No, not quite yet. He is very close, though. He's 200 gold away from the Aghanims. He okay. farmed that really fast. Surprised he uh, he already got it. It feels like he just started. There it is. It's flying out on the courier now. All right. I mean, this that will definitely change things. If if he can live through the duration of the BKB, then look to turn things around with that form that he can he enforce can. on Chrys Crystalis. Yeah. Then then he will probably kill Crystalis in the long run. He can click it early as well and just turn himself into a ghost. Sure. Sure. But yeah, it looks like they're super confident now, Entity, with this. They want to take the fight, they put down wards. Well, they've got the high ground. Chrysalis is going to be caught by the hook shot. Into the stun, and straight on top of him. He gets destroyed this time around by the magical damage output from Pure. Sneesha, they'll have to run. BKB out, and with the remnants who are trying to escape, Toby's on the chase, though. BKB comes to an end. Perfectly timed silence there from Stormstormer, catching him as the BKB came to a finish. Nisha, but the slider fist, continue to retreat. He'll get back over to the safety of Poppy. Entity, turn that attention over towards Ice Ice Ice. Good hit from the ultimate, comes the way of Storm Stormer. He'll jump over to safety. Pure, he's able to stay in on target on top of Ice Ice Ice. He cleans up a second core kill. Nisha, Remnant out for safety, the high ground. He has to get away from the less right. Pure, kicking out too much damage. Zayas to the side, BKB, he has to use it to just try and escape. He'll go for the TP out during the BKB and it will save him. <laughs> Trying to high five him as well and almost landing a hook shot there. Very close. Man, I even that uh, Hex. On Ice Ice Ice, he nearly killed the uh, Stormstormer, hexing the puck there with Timbersaw, but did not quite get him. And again, Entity with a huge catch on the Razor. I think that was the dream. If they find Razor, go on him first. There's not that much to worry about. Just don't stack up for the Black Hole and you're good. Some very clutch getaway as well by Nisha. He again barely dodged the Illusory Orb by Slide of Fisting and it passed by as he was Slide of Fisting.
fights will definitely prove to be more difficult with that BKP duration of Crystalis getting lower. And Pure with that Agonims, as we saw last time round, enabling him to just do so much damage in the team fights. We're gonna get to a point where Brewmaster will have Ag's Refresher. There, there's no way to avoid that anymore. That's going to happen. He already has both the Perseverances and 460 gold, so he's 1200 gold away from the full Refresher Agonims combo. So, four ultis. And at that point, he can just run in with the pandas and scouts and find where Enigma is, find where the key targets are, and lock people down. The panel were talking about how you bring people out of the fight. You nightmare someone, you lift someone else with a panda. It's very difficult to take the fights. Similar idea to what Entity did in the previous game with the Doom and the Black Hole. Secret though, what Secret need to do is just they need to enable the Ember Spirit and play around him. Trying to catch on Pure, but it's too speedy. Yeah, tries to catch, but they don't have the best lockdown. So the choice to build this Hex was good by, by Isis Ice, but they still need to chain the, the Hex with the Bushwhack, I think. Outside of the Black Hole, they don't have that much. Searing Chains is not quite a hard lockdown. You can always BKB and walk away from it. Stormstormer now with an A on disc as well, locked, so Puck shouldn't be bursted in this next fight. Secret being very careful here. The coil to the side will catch Puppy. He's out of the fight before it begins. See Crystal is coming on Stormstormer with the BKB Zyze, trying to get a position for the black hole. He'll drop it to try and catch Stormstormer, but the hook jumps with the ready Fishman immediately putting a stop to the black hole. The Nightmare set up down to Crystalis. He has to run. The BKB is already used. He's got to get away from them as Crystalis. Maybe Chase does Stormstorm want to commit for him? He does. Stormstorm's going to continue to try to chase him down. He's taking a lot of damage from the eye of the storm. They may have dove a bit too deep. Yeah, He'll assemble the Eon Disc, given the chance to jump back out. A second split to the ready Chrysalis has to continue to retreat from this. Yeah, I think this is get out time for Entity. They both TP out on the plus one, plus two. So now Toby is alone in here with his pandas. He should be able to get out safely, though, as he can end it on the Ember uh, Spirit here. Ember Spirit, Fire Panda, whatever. Entity losing the two supports themselves and Secret losing two effectively as that was twice the puppy went down in that fight. Yeah, still though, that was that was the black hole committed and used. Soon the Brewmaster will have his refresher completed and then they can just play very high pace and punish the black hole's long cooldown. Yeah, we'll see here. And they started, they really wanted, you know, Zyx wanted to make sure he could lock down Storm Stormer, but Fishman, uh, he was so ready. I think he wanted both, but Pure just kept running in deeper. Because just a black hole on the puck with Aeon Disc alone is a terrible black hole, even if it connects. You won't be able to burst him. Uh, but he wanted both. However, Pure is it, just a mad lad. He just goes in. He, he didn't run back, he ran deeper. Yeah, a fantastic escape there from Storm Stormer, of course. Assembling the Aeon Disc only when it was needed and not a moment before. Yeah, I was clutch. He waited very long. He had me nervous with that one. <laughs> he, did, he did leave it to that last second. Yeah, I like the build that Leshrac is doing now. Pure going for that blink into Hex. He knows that they need more lockdown. Oh, he might get hexed himself, though. See if they can burst him. It's going to be back up there with a the hook shot. Pure is going to be able to get the BKB off. The grip's there. They're locking down Nisha. Gives them the chance for Pure to take down Ice Ice Ice. Chris is in with the link, though. This time round, will manage to get him in return. It's actually going to be a buyback coming out from Pure. He wants to get back over to join this fight because he knows that the rest of his team are going to be able to chase. With Toby having the, the control on Crystalis, Puppies had to bail out to the side. Crystalis left behind here. As he'll look to hide in the trees, but he's not getting away from them. They're yeah. almost, you know, they're, they're definitely going to be able to take him out. So they'll get the two of them this time round. Yeah, it looks like he is trying to hide, but he's really just picking his grave, you know? Like, yeah. where, where do I want to die? Because there's no way out of that. The, he did buy back. It was, uh, and the end didn't, wasn't necessary. They were going to get the kill regardless. They need to get this rush. They've got to get something here. I mean, the, using the buyback on Lesh. This is the entire reason he bought back, because they want yeah. something. They knew this fight is going to be consequential, that there's going to be stuff happening uh, based on who wins it. They win it handily. They take Roche, and they can even look to take some towers. 50 seconds dead on the Razor. This could be a tier 2 tower if they want to go top. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've taken the Roche, you've taken the Aegis. The buyback feels perfectly fine thanks to that. Looks like they want to go mid and open up that tier 1 tower. Get the closest tower to the Roche pit removed. Preparing for the next Roche even. Yeah, 
Yeah, aggressively just scouting Guys, around, make sure that Zombies if there's anyone down. around, they want to kill them. I feel like they could take the tower faster though, not using the edict to take the tower. And I, okay, they're they're moving to top. I think they're calling the tier two tower is more important. So instead of taking the bottom, the mid tower, which would reset the glyph, uh, they take this tower first. It's the smarter choice. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Now how much are they going to want to push it with Sages? Are we going to see them try for an attempt oh, on the high ground? He gets hexed, so the Sages is going to be perhaps forced. But of course, he has friends still. They're going to chase. They'll settle for, for Kataomi. Yeah, Kataomi going to have to die for his course of sins. The classical support life right there. My core didn't TP out in a safe location, so I'm the one to die. Uh, this is why I could never be a support player. I don't have the nerves for it. Again, some big damage coming out from Nisha. He's got one Dessa, and he's getting the Daedalus. He's got it done. Yeah, he's going for the yeah. full right click, physical damage build Ember. Uh, identifying that if you look on the time, uh, team of Entity, pretty low armor heroes. I mean, you have nine armor clockwork. Sure, the Puck has a bit of armor due to the Witchblade, so he's closer to 20. But overall, the armor values are not great. And once the Brewmaster goes into split, it's much easier to kill the Brewlings with physical damage than with magic damage. So, uh, yeah, potentially he could even start killing Brewlings together with uh, with Razor in late game. Of course, doesn't have the Battle Fury build, so... N not super fast at doing it. Only six Desolator charges. I feel like he should be at higher already, but he hasn't had the best fights ever since he got the Desto. It feels like... Entity are taking the fight slightly, slightly on their own terms. A smoke up here behind Pure. Entity. Oh my god, look at Toby. He has the combination. These are the three items you want when you play Brewmaster. You got the Aghanims, you got the Refresher, you got the A on disc. And even locked A on disc is, you know, stronger than once it's completed. So you can pick whenever you want to activate. Yeah, you're not, you're not stopping this man getting the Primal Splits off. No, He's gonna he, get he will split. Yeah. The only way would be to try and kill him during a black hole, but, you know, that is... Uh, that's the only way they can do it. Yeah, and as we've seen, it's proven to be difficult for Zayats to, to really hold the big black holes. So he has got BKB, so a bit of a better shot of looking for them, but uh, definitely still has to be cautious of Fishman getting those angles with a hook shot. Yeah, he definitely needs to find better opportunities to black hole, but everyone is spreading out so much. They're not close to each other. Puck is doing his own thing, Leshrak usually running alone, and then there's Brewmaster, which, I mean, that's not a good target. So it's really hard. And Clockwork even, he plays in random locations just looking for a hook shot. So this is not the type of team that groups up as five and then you get a big five-man PTG black hole. Like, that's not what you're going to get. Best he can hope for is perhaps catching, like, Leshrak plus one. I think that's all you can wish for. Well, I'm going to see them start things on the walls. Chris, he's got to put the BKB. He'll turn, look to stand his ground against Pure. Pure's going to try and charge towards Nisha. Now turns the tension back over to Chrysalis because the BKB oh, comes Razor. in. They have to set up for the stun. They'll bring Chrysalis low. They'll take him down. And to the side, they'll go for the Fiend's Grip. The Black Hole will be dropped. In fact, it's going to okay. take the three of them. will take the Aegis out of the hands of Pure and bring down Katomi. The buyback from Razor. He's Come back in. See buyback as well from Katomi. They want to continue this fight. And the next split's out from Toby. The stun from Pure catches onto the two of them, gets Poppy. Chrysalis, he's still got to be careful. He may have pulled back for this, but his BKB, of course, still on cooldown. Nisha trying to push forward in on towards Pure. Pure still alive, though. They'll turn with the stun from Toby over towards Chrysalis. Chrysalis, he's got to get back up to the base. Oh, the blink dagger ready. They're kiting out Ice 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 Pure, lining up the stun. He's going to be able to land it. Pop the refresher with Toby. He's going to have another ult ready to go. As he's up to the high ground, Ice Ice Ice, he's trying to run. Stormstorm is looking to chase Pure. He's diving into the base. Ultra kill for Pure on the carry lash. Okay, they're just going in. Oh, they're diving. I mean, they could look to get him the rampage. They're set up there with the coil. Pure's in with the oh dagger. And there it is. God. Pure with the rampage. Just the carry lash track here. Oh my god, what a you statement are, going in and killing him there. After he bought back as well. That hurts. Out for 100 seconds. Uh, diving in with like a 300 HP left track into the tier 4 towers. Entity are playing like they have nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing to lose. Yeah, I think we saw some clutch moves there as well. I think like a nice nightmare came out at a point in that fight. Yes. To keep Pure protected from a heavy amount of burst that Ice 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 was about to throw towards him. And that was with a pretty good black hole. They landed a nice yeah. three-man black hole with the help of the shard. He pulled people in with the with Aghanim shard. 
But... Actually, yeah, so, so Pure ended up in there as well, but it may have even been intentional there from Pure. I think he blinked to, it, towards it. He was very low on the mana and the HP, so yeah. he may have just been looking for the reset off the back of losing his Aegis intentionally. Yeah, for sure. Meanwhile, we see Stormstormer just I'm bullying. They can't even get out of the base. No, he's killing people. Oh, they'll have to come in oh. with a buyback in from Puppy, but they won't be able to get the catch. He did end up kind of blocking that hookshot there, but this Arcan rune, he's having so much fun. He's Octarine Arcan rune. He's in the fountain right now. Storm, don't get crazy, Whoa. my man. <laughs> be a little careful there when he's that close. He's making the space. Space for this, this team to take out the top range racks. See if he can push for the melee. Ice, ice, ice is back in five seconds. Oh, the, the heck? I've got to save him. And throughout the tree, they'll allow him to get the BKB off. Nisha's going to be able to jump back to safety. Now Ice 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 heads forward over towards Pure. He's him in the Hex, but Pure is fine. Ice 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 not having enough burst to finish him off. They have Coil again. If they come out, I think they might try and Coil and fight even more. And there we go. That's two oh, sets back. of racks there taken away by Entity. Yeah, only keeping the ranged mid racks, and it's not even looking very healthy. So everything is looking very much Team Entity now. And... Uh, again, they're in a, spot, in a spot where there's so much lockdown between this Aghanim's Bane, Fiend's Grip. You have the Hex on the Leshrac, the BKB Piercing Disable of the Clockwork as well. It's very difficult for uh, Chrysalis. After he uses BKB on Racer, he feels like a creep in the fight. He, he just gets controlled by Brewmaster and that's it. Yeah, the, the, so the low duration BKBs now. And of course, there's the state that BKBs in the moment with the long cooldowns. Definitely making it difficult. It feels more difficult for Secret to fight in these, yeah. these late game engagements than it does for, for Entity. It's just hard for, like, this Crystalis Racer pick. It's hard to say who he should go on. You can't run next to Brewmaster because he's just in ulti form. You can't chase a Puck because Puck. And then there's Leshrac, but... Most of the time he chases Lesh, it doesn't even really work out no, for him. At, at this point of the game, you're just not able to commit on a core and kill them during a BKB. Yeah. You're not going to be able to kill them quick enough. And that's with the, the, that's a struggle. With the added effect that nobody cares about losing their damage against him, you know, nobody wants to auto attack on Team Entity anyway. They're all spellcasters. So Racer just feels extremely useless. And oh no. Oh, here we go. They found the, the spell prism and the time this rally. Pretty much uh, the two perfect times for uh, this sort of lineup, right? Absolutely insane drops. But it seems like Stormstormer even keeps the flicker at first here. He might want that even more against the Searing Chains. Okay. Um, so he might prioritize that. Oh, but yeah. Yes. I mean, prism's going to feel good for Toby here as well, of oh, course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So, I'll be happy with their tier fours. Timeless Relic, of course, in the hands of Pure. Uh, he's going to be looking for his, his second rampage, I feel, with the items that he's got. I think so. As if he didn't do enough already, but yeah, he's very strong. Oh, the coil kills one, right? And they'll probably do best to just let Puppy die here. Actually, maybe Puppy will get out. It's actually going to be Zayas that dies instead. Yeah, now with a shard on Leshrac as well with the Timeless Relic. That stun is dangerous. Don't get caught in stun, because you might just get stuck forever. turning into a very difficult game now for Secret. They're down 15k. Yeah, and there's obnoxious Puck. Can they burst him? They're gonna try. Nishi commits him with the BKB. Pure, he's ready to turn fire here with his own Rip. BKB. Charges over towards Crystalis. Crystalis getting controlled by Katsomi. Mean, they can't put a stop to the grip. As Crystalis down for 90 seconds. Buyback, of course, still on cooldown. They catch the stun as well. Pure, he's able to find Nisha. The calls are down, there'll be a buyback coming out from him. Zayats did buy back, but pretty much immediately died. So Secret now without Chrysalis and Zayats for over a minute. Secret, they're trying to hold on to this. This is, this is just too rough, man. They, they don't have any tool to fight this. And they're ready to dive in. Looking to go behind the tier fours. Pure, ready to add more kills to the scoreboard. Nail tap out. GG is called. Entity will take this game three. And with that, the series, it's theirs. Two to one. And you know, after a rough first game of the series, Waga, but we saw them sort of stick to, to the approach that we, we sort of love to see from this team before, where they just come in with different strats, things that other teams are just not doing anything close to, and it, they're able to make it work in the last two.